Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to East Carolina University. My name is Chris Dansbury. This is Aaron Lucier. We're going to go ahead and take our masks off so you can actually hear us. We are keeping our appropriate social distancing, and we're the only ones here in Clement Hall, so we feel pretty good about that uh, as we have this conversation today. This is Pirate Parents Live here at ECU, uh, and for the next little while, we're going to talk uh, about the spring housing opportunities that folks have to come back and live on campus. Uh, we'll give you a little recap of where we are that got us to this point throughout the fall. Uh, Aaron will walk through a lot of the process, where you can find the application, what questions you might have. The form has been open for about a week. He's gotten probably a series of questions that we'll be able to run through that maybe you have uh, the same type of questions. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to just run through. My name is Chris Dansbury, Associate Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs. Uh, just kind of run through briefly where we are that got us to this point. Uh, ECU, like many other schools in the UNC system, North Carolina uh, State, uh, Chapel Hill, and many others, had to do that pivot to online education earlier in the fall. We were able to keep our residence halls open. Uh, we have about 800 students that stayed with us that lived here on campus. All of them early in the semester moved up to College Hill. Uh, Todd Dining Hall remains open, all of them in individual rooms up on College Hill, my own son included, and he has loved the experience. Um, and I want to give a lot of credit to our students that have remained here on campus. Uh, they did testing prior to moving up from their room up to College Hill. They've done some voluntary testing throughout the semester. Uh, they've done such a fantastic job. Uh, being healthy has been a, a key message from the university. There's been times that we have not had any students in quarantine and isolation during the course of this fall semester for those 800 plus students. That is just fantastic. Uh, they're taking it very seriously and the message is loud and clear. If they want to return to some semblance of a normal collegiate experience, it is upon them to make sure that they're staying healthy and doing everything from wearing their masks, being socially distanced, and not putting themselves in any precarious situations uh, for the spread of COVID-19. So kudos to them. We appreciate all that they have done uh, to, to get us to this point. As we now go into the mid to late part of the fall semester, it is time for us to kind of turn our attention towards spring 2021. Uh, those 800 plus students will remain with us as they go into the spring semester for 2021. And now we have, excuse me, opportunity for even more students to come back. Another 12 to 1500 students perhaps that have that opportunity to maybe come back and live on campus and get us to 2000. The goal is all individual rooms and everybody staying that way for the course of the rest of the fall and into the spring. So I'm going to turn it over to Aaron here. Aaron's going to talk a little bit about the application opening up, where you can find it, and some of those things that you may want to know. Aaron? Well, the application uh, opened on PowerPort, so students log into PowerPort like they do for so many things um, at ECU. Um, and they uh, go under the Campus Living section and they sign up. And so unlike the, um, of your student lived on campus for fall, or if you as a student lived on campus for the early part of fall, you do not need to pay um, fees at this time. So um, you've already paid your, in most cases, you've already paid your application fee. And so if you've paid your application fee, you don't need to pay that again. And, and since we typically collect a, um, in what we call it an advanced room fee for spring, and this is for spring, we are not advancing that out. So um, that uh, there is no cost to sign up for this point. Um, uh, now, if you're a brand new student who's just coming and starting at ECU, you would be billed for your um, application fee if you haven't paid it before. But uh, other than that, um, you just sign up, um, student signs up, logs into their account, reads the, um, the new contract, and it is a new contract because um, if you did not stay with us, we ended your fall contract. And so students have to re-sign a whole new document basically indicating they're going to be living with um, they do that and then we will take that information and part of our plans and you're going to hear me from this say this a few times is going to de depend on numbers the number of buildings we reopen the num uh, how we reopen to some extent um, the length of that reopening and how many days we're going to have to do that to social distancing is going to largely depend on how many students we have coming back we are certainly planning for a, a good number of students coming back particularly with ECU returning to at least the online, um, online slash in-person options that we did like um, started this fall. And so with that, we want to be flexible and be able to bring back as many students as we possibly can. Um, or really, not even as much as we can, as many as want to return. Um, because we want students to come back who want to come back. 
And there's been questions. Some of them are the ones we, we talked about in the fall about the freshman residency requirements. So yeah. that has been waived for spring 2021. So there is not that requirement. However, it is open for you to come back. And, and a lot of folks maybe either move back home, whether you lived out of state or across North Carolina, you went back home for the fall semester. This is the time that you can come back and you can come back for that spring semester. As Aaron said, sign that new housing contract to stay with us for the spring and get that opportunity to live on campus. And, and it is a big part of the collegiate experience is being able to relate and have uh, roommates and, and, well not roommates in this case, but people that live on your hall and have that experience where you're getting to interact uh, with folks. So this is a chance to come back. What are some of the other questions maybe, Aaron, that people have been asking? Well, some of the things has been about what resources have reopened on campus. So the good news thing is um, entering into the new phase that the governor signed it. Uh, oh. Volume a little bit higher. Oh. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, with the uh, with the governor's new, we're in a new phase since most of the students were on campus. And so with that new phase, the rec center has um, opened with limited operations um, by appointment, sort of scheduled out. And that's going to be available in the spring too. So some even some of the resources that were not even um, open to us um, in the fall when students came back are now open to us. Um, Certainly, we've adapted more. Um, we are in a situation from our current phase, we're allowed to do additional programming. So um, some of the programming that's been going on, um, they're doing outdoor movies out um, by the new student center. All of these are the things that are happening. So people have asked, you know, what is going on on campus? Well, more is going on on campus. Even when then we have less students, a lot of students moved into apartment complexes, so they're around. So there is a healthy student population here in Greenville. It still feels very collegiate as you're in this section of town around the university. Um, but in terms of what's going to be going on in, in terms of food service, uh, uh, the, with the number of students that we, we have to plan for, we will not be opening both dining halls. We made the, um, the decision it would be the best value for students that we keep Todd open um, and not open West End. But that doesn't mean there isn't going to be food service here on West End. Um, the Reed Street Market and the subway there will be open. And um, the, the number of the food options over in the new student center, which is very walkable from this area, will be reopened as well. Or currently open, but we, we will match those out to um, the number of people that are coming back. So more students come back, we will flex and open up more options. So if a student um, who's coming back uh, College Hill is relatively full because of the students, the 800 students that are there and using one of our facilities up there as a possible quarantine isolation facility for us. Um, with that, um, we will reopen Legacy Hall on College Hill, um, use some of the other spaces in Jones and Tyler and um, Scott and Gateway that will be open and available to us. But then the other students would be starting out and we would open up um, two of these. Um, and the reason why we're here in Clement Hall today is Clement Hall would be one of the two halls that we're gonna start out as a base deciding to open and that would be Clement and Green Hall. And if we need White Hall, um, we can reopen White. And if we need Fletcher, we can reopen Fletcher. And so we can flex um, as the number of students come back. Um, so um, people are asking if I don't sign up tomorrow, will there be space? Well, we are making space as available. So um, we are um, um, making the decisions about how we're gonna come back and what buildings are gonna come back based on those numbers. And I will add in there, you mentioned something, Aaron, about quarantine isolation space. And I think it's important, especially for parents and families that are thinking about this. One of the issues that many colleges and schools had early in the fall semester is we ran out of space to put students that including were, ECU. Yeah, it, including ECU, we just didn't have the space and we were using an off-campus location. With this plan that we are using for the current fall, but then expanding, we will have two residence halls that will absolutely be identified for quarantine and isolation. So that will give us about 350 to 380 beds, hoping that we never need that many at all. And if we're keeping the numbers that we've got right now really low, that's fantastic. But we will have that designated space on campus for our students that live in the residence hall. So that is another hurdle. It's kind of one of those things you have to trip over and fall over it for us to figure out uh, part of the plan and, and a lot of what we've done have been from steps that we've learned from our peer schools from our UNC system schools that really in this COVID environment has come become a best practice and ECU is definitely uh, continuing to lead the way and try and find new ways and better ways to make sure we keep our students safe but also get them back um, on campus so we will have two designated spaces for that I should have said too 
If you're watching the live version, feel free to put questions and comments into the comment box. We have a few folks within the Division of Student Affairs that are monitoring and housing student health, dean of students, and so forth that can answer those questions. If you're watching the archived edition of this, look through the comments, see if your question's been asked there. If not, we will continue to have folks, parent, family programs, campus living, we'll be keeping an eye on those questions for you too. And if they have questions, they're not really sure where to go, Aaron, where's a good housing number for them to reach out to? Um, 328-4663. Um, so 252-328-4663. That is the main housing number. They'll direct you. Um, they, they're, they're, we have a great um, professional student staff that will redirect you to whoever you need to. Or um, you know, feel free to email us at housing at ecu.edu as well with any specific questions. Or if you have a specific request or if you're just not sure, as it can be a request. Now, one of the things I want to talk about in terms of food service too is, is recognizing if your student does get assigned to West End or Central, depending on how many calls we open, there will be a, a meal, a special meal plan option open for those students on Central and um, on West End. Because we know that we're going to be limiting um, a little bit of, um, some of the access to uh, the dining hall, there's a special pirate, a purple meal plan that we're calling the 160. And that's going to be 160 retail pirate meals, namely at um, the Reed Street Market, um, Subway, or uh, Panda Express, or um, uh, Raising Cane's, which are great options. So they'll have 160 meals there, 50 dining hall meals reserved for them and ready for them. And um, I'll talk about the transportation of that as well. And then $400 in declining downs, basically a bus. Um, and those are available to that special meal plan would be available to only students that are assigned to Central or West Hall. The good thing about that is we are also doing some special things with the transportation. So during dining hall hours, there will be a 15 minute, every 15 minute departure bus option. And so, um, and with in-person classes of your student as in the academic core, College Hill is just a quick walk up the hill for a lunch after class or something like that. So the dining hall is gonna be readily available but this meal plan will be, so they could pick a, um, the more traditional all access plan, or they can pick the special purpose plan that is a little bit more retail focused. So dining options will still be out there, um, a lot of flexibility, which we've already, always been the hallmark of our dining programs at East Carolina. And, and I think that's really important for folks to understand. Um, the adaptability right now is we're trying to make things as flexible as possible. We understand that if you end up in Clement Hall, it might be a little bit of a hike to get all the way up the top. Therefore, the flexibility of the new plan that Aaron just discussed to get you the ability to go to the student center, to read street, and so on the things. Or if you just like going to the dining hall, hopping on the bus is a very quick route, right up and right back. Uh, if you're in that academic core, as Aaron said, you go up there, grab a bite to eat, grab a bus that brings you right back to West End. Uh, a lot of the flexibility right now is trying to make it so that it's more convenient in what we know is a very inconvenient world right now. It is just not the way that we're used to doing things. And so I think that the extra dining plan, the extra options, if you're not really sure, if you have a dining question, yeah. maybe it's different than the housing question, where should they go for that? Um, they should contact uh, Dining uh, Services. Uh, they've got the staff, and once again, we also have resources like our campus acquisition who's available. I, I would have to say um, the good thing about, uh, one of the things that we did really well was how they set up the dining hall. They managed the numbers great. And there's still going to be that um, that dining hall, one meal a day takeout option as well. So that flexibility that we put in place for COVID and um, how we were operating this fall are still going to be in place up at Todd. So if they still want to just go up to Todd and get a to-go meal, so literally hop on the bus and come on back uh, after they grab their meal, that will be available for their one um, takeout meal uh, option. But uh, I've been, um, I have a meal plan myself, and I've been popping into Todd from time to time for lunch and just sitting down. And they have a great setup for social distancing. There's lots of tables still available, lots of space between the tables. You don't feel like anybody's on top of you. Uh, but there is there is that flexibility to just sit down in the dining hall. And we have our great Eastern North Carolina weather too. Um, we've got lots of great places to eat outside. Um, we're right over here in Clement Hall, which has a great patio that overlooks the uh, uptown Greenville area. And it, it's just a great spot to get some of that outside socializing or that outside meal, or just study outside and, and, and take a break from your room. Um, and that's one of the things we've been encouraging students to do while they are in a single 
we still want them to go out and, and, and see, get out of the room, stretch their legs, see the campus, um, take advantage of our, our beautiful campus. But thankfully, winter is a weekend in February. And so <laughs> hopefully we will continue to have our good weather. And, and it is one of those things too, where the precautions have been taken, taken within Todd Dining Hall. When you go in there, there's certain things that maybe you wouldn't be accustomed to where you would go up and make your own salad. Well, now you've got um, staff that are there, they're gonna help you to do that. All the food is still there, all the options are still there. It's just a little bit different as you maybe you go to your own restaurants in, in your own town and that kind of thing. But uh, all of the options are still there and the food is still uh, fantastic and amazing. My son is a regular. He goes across from Jones across to, to Todd all the time uh, and enjoys it there. I think one of the other things too, Aaron, you mentioned dining. So that would be dining at ecu.edu if they've got yes. those questions, so feel free to reach out. So yes. housing questions, housing at ecu.edu, Dining questions, go to dining at ecu.edu and you'll be able to ask a lot of those. If you're not even sure where to start, one of those two is a great place to go. And then somebody will give you a call back or if you call The back, housing we'll staff are great at referring you around campus as needed. We, we're used to doing that all the time. So. And I do want to mention for, for parents and families, if, if you're considering this and we hope you are coming back and living with us on campus in the spring, we really strongly encourage you to have conversations with your student coming back about the responsibility of making good choices when they come back, making sure that they're abiding by right now. If you're from out of state, we have a very limited on what we can do for gatherings, for indoor and outdoor, still very small numbers. That may change as we go a little bit, but it may not. It depends on how things go. But it is very important for the students to make sure that they are following every precaution possible. You're gonna see all of us when we walk across campus. I walked over here today from my office and I wore my mask the whole time. We've always got our masks all over the place. Make sure that they're aware that what they do, who they're hanging out with, where they're going, all those types of things are very important decisions because it will impact and can impact the way that they end up going to college. The other thing for our students that we have here in the fall, we're telling them, make sure you're being smart. You're getting ready to go home for Thanksgiving and go home for winter break. The last thing we want is somebody taking something that they get here back home to their family. So I would encourage you, make sure you have those conversations about being responsible, being responsible during the winter break and as we get close to coming back um, in the spring. I will say too, the university is going to be very transparent with our plans as we go to the end of the semester. We will communicate more as we get closer to January about things like testing, what's going to be available. There'll be more things that become available as we go into the spring. So make sure your student is paying attention to their ECU email account. Parents and family pay attention to the parent portal off of parent family programs. And there'll be a lot of communications that come out of uh, campus uh, living and dining services as well. And some of the good things that happen in this fall, the drop off period that we did in, in advance of move-in, we're gonna be doing that in January again, so giving students an opportunity. And with that idea that we are going to be doing, or testing when students come back, students, if they do the drop off the weekend before we open the residence hall, we'll be able to test here on campus and get a test, have your results, and that. Now, students and parents do not test right before Christmas and say, I, I've got my COVID test, I'm good to go. We are going to require a test to return to the residence halls about seven days before your arrival. Once again, as Chris was saying, you're going to get a lot more specific information after you sign up about windows and how to do that and what's, what kind of um, documentation you can provide. Or if you come back for drop off of just getting it on campus and you don't have to worry about that transfer of information. But we are going to do that as a baseline, as a, which turned out to be a very strong decision um, to make our situation here on campus for that 800 students that we had a lot, a lot to face. Any closing thoughts for you? Anything that maybe people have asked questions about that we want to make sure we reinforce? Well, I, I think a lot of folks are asking questions about decisions about you know when am I going to know what kind of online or, or, or in-person classes. Registration is coming up in early November. So your student um, needs to keep an eye on their registration window of what's happening and they're gonna make decisions. If they get a schedule that they're not happy with in terms of if everything, nothing's in person and they really wanna come back, they can talk to their advisor about switching out classes and responding to that. I think students, sometimes the incoming students feel like the schedule they got was the schedule they got. I'm like, you always have the flexibility of adding and dropping classes in there. So if you're really excited about coming back and you really want to make that decision, but you want to have that value of some in-person instruction, that's part of your registration window that's coming up. And that's something you can be a part of making those decisions for yourself. Is there a deadline for people to sign up for the housing contract? 
Um, I wouldn't say there's a deadline, but with all things, when we run out of space, we run out of space. And we've had a lot of people sign up already, which is great, and we're very excited about it. But we certainly have capacity right now to expand the number of buildings, so we don't want to discourage anybody. Um, but if we start getting fuller and getting close to where our capacity is, that will come out via email saying, hey, you need to make those decisions now. And so we will operate under that. But certainly, at this point, we have the space to have them come back and work with us. And, and just kind of recapping the highlights of this, we have space right now. College Hill has about 800 students or so. We're ready and available to go to Central and West End as far as expanding through that. In the spring, every student will be in their own room. They will not have any roommates in that capacity. We will have Todd Dining Hall that will remain open. There will be multiple eating options on the West End community, but also in the main campus student center. And, and as well up on, on College Hill. And um, we will have testing available, we'll have options available, there'll be services, student health services available, counseling still available, a tutoring center, library, all of the things that you would expect to be available as a part of your collegiate experience are currently open now and will be for the spring semester. The benefit is we are gonna be going back to some of the face-to-face -face classes and uh, keeping those precautions. So, so I think that's, that's kind of the general gist of it. Again, housing.ecu.edu for email. Uh, dining at ecu.edu uh, for those questions. If you have a question for housing in particular, 252-328-4663 uh, is a great place to start if you're just not sure. Um, and if you have questions, let us know. We're here to help us. The Parent Family Programs is another great resource. If you're not sure where to go, check out the Parent Portal. Lots of information there, and their office, Carter, is uh, a great resource. And so she's uh, somebody that you definitely want to get to know. So um, in the meantime, we want to share with you, we're coming up on Halloween. Uh, parents, if you got kids that are here or living in Eastern North Carolina, please make sure that they are taking every precaution possible. It is going to be on a Friday and Saturday night weekend. We are trying to limit those gatherings. The City of Greenville, ECU PD, Greenville PD, and East Carolina University are all working together, trying to keep those gatherings low, trying to keep the spread of this virus down as much as possible so that we can continue to operate as we want to going forward. As we get to the holiday season, Thanksgiving and into the winter break, we want to wish you and yours the very safest and happiest holiday seasons. Until we get a chance to talk again, and we will, I can promise you, anytime we have messages coming up, we will do these Facebook Lives, especially as we get to the spring. Of course, so and talk about opening and we'll do sure drop off movement and all of that, yeah. much more coming up. Until then, stay safe and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.